Greetings people, it's Gerard here, Wolf Kane one back to do another video. Hello, how are you? I'm very, very well. I had tea... Yes, so, um, apologies for that. The, uh, the cat's still alive, which is, uh, which is good. So, thank you for joining me. Um, uh, before I get on into anything, I was going to say, has anyone been reading in the news recently about they had this inquiry into Stafford Hospital? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what to make of all of that, to be honest. I mean, what's the point in having an inquiry? if you identify loads and loads and loads of things that are wrong but say nobody was to blame for it things don't just happen right on their own without anybody being involved so if you if you for example if, if i was to do an inquiry um and like the stafford hospital one i found that there was mismanagement there was no care in place there was this there was that there's all these things wrong and i made 290 recommendations about how these things can be tackled. At the bottom of that inquiry, I would put down, um, start off, recommendation number one, start off by firing this cunt. Start off by bringing criminal charges of neglect and misconduct to this person and this person and this person. Because things don't just happen by accident. Medical negligence doesn't just happen on a whim. It's it's down to laziness, it's down to no thought or preparation or actually having absolutely no empathy whatsoever for um, any of the people you're supposed to treat. Which brings me very conveniently on to um, episode two of season two of Strange Corner. Thank you for joining me. I'm Gerard Gavin Barry, your host for the day. Um, right. Okay, I'm going to take you back in time to the 21st of January 1997. And I remember this date exactly. Um, one, because I'm slightly aspergic, and two, because it was two days after my birthday. Two days after my 17th birthday, in fact. Um, and I'm going to come on to that story right after I've had this cigarette. Ah, see, I'm going to make you wait for it, just like I do every other fucking video. Right, I'm going to make you wait for it. Um, I hope it's worth it. Uh, we'll find out after this break. Just checking we were still recording there. Um, I've had to turn the light on because it's getting darker and darker and darker in here. Um, so well, Roger. Oh, yes. Two days after my 17th birthday, the 21st of January 1997. It should have been a glorious time. I've just turned 17. What could possibly go wrong? Well, um, I was uh, besieged by uh, a medical condition uh, for much of my younger life. I didn't know that, particularly. Um, I don't have it now. Lovely. You know, things are looking up already, aren't they? Um, I didn't know that, of course, and nobody else knew that. It's just the way it was. It, it was one of those things. It was one of those things. And um, two days after my 17th birthday, I'm 17, back in Brilliant, um, I came down the stairs and uh, I said to my mother, who was tapping away on a, on a little Amstrad word processor, um, I said to her, I'm, I've, um, I'm in a lot of pain here. I've, I've got a really bad stomachache. And uh, she said, "Oh right, okay." I said, "I've never felt a pain like this before. It's it's horrific, absolutely horrific." Um, imagine me saying this through gritted teeth. I'm not going to reenact the whole thing for you. And um, she she said, "Well, you know, it might be your appendix. It might be your appendix. So we should probably get you to the hospital." So I said, "Fine." Um, so I was about excuse me. I was about to go back upstairs for something and um, before I got up the stairs um, I collapsed on the floor instead just like bang so my mother thought alright we won't take the car then we'll just call an ambulance instead as you do she was very calm and collected about it was my mother bless her um, so they rushed me down to the hospital in the ambulance 
and um, they, they do a check over of me and they say what's wrong and I say oh well you know it's, I had this very very bad stomach um, pain and you know through, again through gritted teeth you know I'm a little you know just do something do something because I can't stand this I cannot stand this this is the worst pain I've ever felt um, so they uh, they said right well it's uh, a possibility we, we're going to need to run some tests we may need to operate on you um, so two days after my 17th birthday I'm 17 a, things are looking up now things are starting to look very 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 poor indeed so um, right okay so I might need an operation brilliant um, so, as is the standard procedure with um, any medical procedure, if they if they need to um, if they need to operate on you, what they will do is they will put a, a, a sign on your bed that reads "Nil by mouth," which basically means under no circumstances um, for uh, I think it's probably six to twelve hours or something like that before an operation, you are to have no fluid and no food. So there we go, day one. I'm on nil by mouth, and I'm sitting there in my bed like that, waiting for the inevitable to take place um, and this carried over into day two um, where it looked like they might not actually need to do the operation after all you know they, they, they've done, done one or two bits to me I felt like a bit of a lab rat but you know that, that's you know by the by um, they think they might not need to do the operation after all but they do want to keep me in for observation. The observation part at this stage is critical. So, uh, okie dokie. So, I'm, I'm staying in hospital then. That, that, that's absolutely brilliant. Bearing in mind that, that they put me in a room with uh, five other people. Now, I, I don't mind sharing um, hospital wards and hospital rooms in general. Um, I do get a little bit sort of tetchy when I'm put in a room with a guy who is moaning and muttering incoherently to himself because I don't know if his pain medication is wearing off or maybe it's just kicking in I don't know who knows um, it's, I, he's like sort of in the bed directly opposite me going ah, ah, so that's you know you know, I'm, I'm in hospital myself I don't know why I'm in hospital but you know I'm, I'm opposite this cunt and he's making me feel a little bit uncomfortable um, the guy in the bed next to me is from what I recall heavily sedated um, and I can't really account for the other three people in the room all I remember is this guy in front of me ah, 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 you thought it was like something of a Nazi experiment chamber or something so that was day two of my sort of experience in hospital and it moved on into day three I'm still there and now they're thinking to themselves they definitely don't have to operate um, they want to give me some medication to see how I, I do on that um, and my mother said uh, oh, so ev everything's fine then is it he's, he's, he's been eating and drinking and they said oh yeah 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 he's, he's been eating and drinking yeah no, no problems um, I'm lying in bed like this oh, is there anybody there and my mother says uh, do you want a little bit of water oh yeah Yes, I'd, I'd like some water, please, if you wouldn't mind. So they just giving me tiny little sips of water, and it, the water felt good, man. It felt really good. Um, and then we sort of come on into like sort of day four. I don't really remember anything past um, well day two and a half. To be fair, I mean a lot of this I had to ask my mother for the details. So I'm, I'm because by this stage I was actually quite um, quite spaced out, actually uh, delirious, in fact, um, and through the mists and the haze I've got ah, on the opposite bed you know fucking lovely anyway we come on to day five of my uh, time in hospital I've had no operation at, at, at all um I haven't really had much of anything to be fair um no operation no observation um no food and no water there we are when they decide that you're not going to need an operation after all but they want to keep you in for observation I'm just going to say this now South End General Hospital in Essex if you're going to keep someone in for five days take the kneel by mouth sign off their bed so the whole experience isn't some fucking twilight zone fucking Quatermass thing okay because 
when my mother said on day three is he eating and drinking and you went oh 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 yes it is indeed it is eating what exactly air particles I managed to get my moisture from the sweat that was emanating as a thin layer in the air from the cunt opposite me who, who's like oh oh fucking lovely yeah in five days right let, let, I was not a, uh, a fat kid ever right um, I mean, if, if I stand up now, there we go, turn me to the side and everything, I'm not massive now. I'm 11 and a half stone now, okay? And here's an interesting thing. When I went into hospital at 17, being a very thin boy, um, I weighed 8 stone. I was 8 stone and uh, nearly 6 foot. So I, I gave Garden Rakes a bad name, you know. Um, when you put someone on nearby mouth for 5 days... And what tends to happen is that person loses weight. In fact, they lose weight at an exponential rate, okay? When I came out of that hospital, and I'll tell you how I came out of the hospital in a minute, I weighed five stone maximum. Now, I'm not sure what the conversion rate is for anybody in America, so you don't have to do some Google research. Five stone for people in the UK at 17 years old, okay? Two days after my 17th birthday. Hooray! Things are really not fucking looking good now, are they? So, um, I've had no food, I've had no water, I've had no medication, I've had no observation, I've had no operation. I've also had, um, they wouldn't let me into the bathroom to wash and clean myself. They wouldn't let me change my clothes because, oh, we're keeping you in for observation. I'd like to know exactly what danger I'm going to get up to in a bathroom by splashing some water on me and making myself feel slightly more fresh as I wait for death, right? So, no. So my mother, bless her, goes absolutely batshit crazy and uh, said, right, I'm taking him out of hospital. And they said, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't, that's not advisable. Well, can I just say, uh, speaking even from a non-medical point of view here, it's not advisable to keep me in hospital where your, your clear intention is to kill me quickly, or in this case, slowly, over a period of about a week. And, um... My mother said, no, no, I'm, t I'm taking him out of hospital. I'm taking him out right now. And they said, well, if you're going to take him out, you need to sign this release form. And basically, what the release form said, or so I've been reliably informed, because by this stage, I'm not fucking even sure I'm in the same galaxy as the rest of you, um, that the uh, release form basically says, if you take uh, said patient out of hospital, the hospital cannot be um, held responsible for anything that may happen to him um, outside and my mother said I'm not signing shit do you know what fair play to me old mum yeah, yeah she ain't that bad after all this despite the fact she's mental right she's got her head on her when she needs to and they said no 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 you must sign this form and she said not on your fucking nelly so she helps me get dressed right now, bear in mind this is two days after my 17th birthday right fucking winner um, I've got absolutely no strength whatsoever so she helps me get dressed that sort of scrapes me off the bed carries me pretty much out of a hospital in her arms my mother is five foot by the way my mother's five foot pretty much carries me out of the hospital um, it's like a very very um, twisted version of an officer and a gentleman and um, puts me into a taxi and takes me home and then I spent god knows how long off college recuperating, gaining my strength, eating little bits. Because the thing is, when, when you lose a massive amount of weight, first thing that tends to go is your stomach. It shrinks massively. So I couldn't go home and go, right, give me three whole chickens and I will devour. No, I've got to eat tiny little morsels, tiny little bits here and there. Take tiny little sips of water here and there. I can't rush it. I've got to stagger it. Um, in order to make your stomach expand again so I can put more food into it I can put on weight um yeah I, I'm now 11 and a half stone okay so from the time I was 17 to the time I was 20 oh fuck hang on uh 20 let's say for argument sake 25 so that's 8 years right I have struggled to put on weight in fact I was steady at about nine stone up until the point I was 25. Then I started getting into 26 
and at that point my DNA sort of fucking put its hands up and went, you know, all right, fine. And I'm now a very comfortable 11 and a half stone, and I've been 11 and a half stone for the last two years or so. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank not only my mother for saving me from a fate worse than a fate worse than death, but also for South End Hospital's general ignorance. So when you're talking, right, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the Stafford Hospital scandal and this hospital scandal and that hospital scandal, people seem to think that the NHS degradation thing is, is, is kind of a new thing. No, no, it was going on 16 years ago, okay? And I am fucking living proof, or almost, almost not living proof, of the fact that the NHS, particularly my local hospital at the town, South End General, are in fact a bunch of mismanaged cunts. So there we are. Um, this is not going to be the last time I come back to South End Hospital during the run of Season 2 of Strange Corner. I'm just warning you of that now, because these cunts seem to have gone out of their way. Um, for all the time I lived in Essex, they seem to have gone out of their way to fuck with me in some way. And I will more than happily sit here, rant and rave like a fucking banshee, right, to prove that point. And so this is my little bit of... Uh, Payback, if you will. I'm, I'm taking back uh, my dignity here, South End General. Thank you very much for nearly killing me, you cunts. So, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. If you think you've ever had a bad experience in hospital, if you've been waiting uh, six hours to see somebody for an ingrowing toenail, or maybe you just think um, that uh, the overall hospital experience isn't quite what it's pegged up to be. I'd, I'd like you to just think that none of you have probably ever been put on Neil by Mouth for five days and expected to get through it to some degree or another. So this is before they even had pathways, care pathways, where they just fucking leave you to rot, right? South in general, you could almost argue, have in fact been fucking trendsetters in the whole thing. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is... Season 2, Episode 2 of Wolf King 1, Strange Corner. Um, I'm sure I've missed out shitloads there, actually. Um, <laughs> let me think. Uh, they almost killed me. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to the guy who was in the bed opposite me, who just go, came and ow, oh, oh, I'm not sure what happened to him. Um, and I'm not sure what happened to the guy who was heavily sedated next to me. And uh, as again, I can't account for the other three people in the room. I'm assuming they didn't survive their ordeals. So, um... So thank you very much for watching this, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gerard Garvin Barry, also known as Wolf Kane One, not fucking dead, having recently celebrated his thirty third birthday in no particular style, saying I will be back at some point soon with more reviews, more content and of course more Wolf Kane One Strange Corner. Thank you very much for joining me and uh rest in peace.